So we brought this um, 88 Viscount Sea Breeze a couple of days ago. Plan it's registered and it's pretty much good to go as is, but we want to modernise it a little bit, get it a bit higher off the ground, make sure everything's working well. A little bit of a reno. Um, I want to be able to take it off-road. So there's a few things we need to do to get there. But first ace, there's a lot of measuring and checking and whatnot. I'm up on the roof doing some ceiling. I'm about halfway. More precautionary than anything, but there has been a little bit of water damage I found. Just in the cabinet up the back here. I don't know if you can see much. It's pretty dark. What are you doing, Tiffy? Measuring the windows. Tiff's going to re-upholster everything. The tartan's not really for us. And we're going to try and get a bigger bed in here, queen or a king, and move those cabinets. Paint the cabinets, rip up the carpet, reline over the floor, new bench tops, and uh, yeah, Let's see how we go. So Cam's sealing the roof at the moment. It had a bit of uh, was leaking a little bit, so he's re doing all the silicon around the edges. And then it needs a bit of a wash and a clean. Might paint the outside white and um, do a black strip along the bottom. All right, I've finished the siliconing. It took me about two tubes. The stuff I'm using is a roof and gutter. It's flexible um, and it's, it's designed for exterior use. So Got to be UV stabilised and whatnot, so it should last a while. Don't have to be too neat up here because no one's going to see it. You just want it well sealed. Um, before I put anything on there, I, this is uh, uh, Terps, mineral turpentine. I gave it a spray all over everywhere I'm going to be putting it, and then I give it a quick rub down with some um, with a rag. You don't want to. Well, I didn't want to dig out all the old silicon because of the year this was built. It's highly likely there's asbestos in the silicon. So if I can, I'm trying to go over it, which isn't the neatest job, um, but it just means less chance of, you know, airborne asbestos if there is any in here, which I don't know. Anyway, I'm just putting the silicon anywhere water can pull, pretty much everywhere where there's joins. So I've done it on this side of the, of the um, plastic bead, on that side, um, so that side, that side, and then this side as well for the aluminium trim, and then on both sides of that alley trim that joins the two sheets on top. So basically, anywhere there's a break in material. So yeah, two tubes of that, takes about an hour, and uh, it's certainly gonna slow down, if not stop any water ingress. Should stop it all, really. Uh, baby Chloe's hard at work with her renovations as well. Fast asleep. She probably likes all the noise. So a little bit of a tour of the caravan. It's a bit dark in here. It's not any lighting on at the moment, but as you can see, there's a lot of brown. We've got brown cabinets. Kind of like a cream floor. Cream curtains and a brown tartan lounge. So we've got a double bed in here, um, it's pretty small, we're used to sleeping on a king bed so we're going to flip it around lengthways and possibly put a king in and then put a single bed, bunk bed like over the top of the bed, um, that'll be Chloe's bed. Uh, if that doesn't work out we'll um, move this couch area, well we'll change the couch area so it um, converts into a single bed. But we're thinking it'll probably be best to keep all the beds at this end just so when Chloe's asleep at night we can block that off and we can still hang around this lounge area. So the, the lounge cushions we're going to rip up and put like a dark linen colour and then the curtains we're also going to change into probably roller blinds and that'll be a dark colour as well 
and then the floor you can see there's carpet in the bedroom area and then we've got lino down here so we're going to redo this whole floor with a um, like a wood grain laminate that you can buy Apparently everything still works, so the oven, the microwave, and the fridge here, they all work still apparently. We haven't tested them, but fingers crossed they do. Day one demo day is done. We got the all the curtains out ready to take home to re um, to re upholster or whatever redo, redo. Um, beds out all the carpets out the bed frame which looks a little bit like a boat uh, all the trim bits are ready to do the vinyl we're going to lay the new vinyl straight over this stuff the old tables out all that upholstery is gone all that filthy carpets up like I said beds out like I said we just got to think about what orientation we're going to do the bed and how we're going to trick up the cabinets and and uh, what we're going to paint and what colours. Getting there. So today we've done a little bit of painting, um, the inside, not the outside yet. Um, to prep it, I've used um, uh, this penetrating oil. I basically just went over all the inside surfaces that I'm planning to paint first. Um, and then you don't have to sand it back like you normally would because you're painting over a glossy surface But if I use this you don't have to it primes it and then this is the paint I'm using It's just a low sheen so you can't see all the imperfections because there's going to be plenty um, And it's uh, water clean up So I've patched all the holes using some spac filler And then sanded them back you got holes where cabinets have come out and things like that No seriously big holes just screw holes but yeah, so it's been primed and it's had the first undercoat go on. It's looking pretty scrappy at the moment. But hopefully the next coat will come up a hell of a lot better. So I finish off the painting. Then we'll do the old re-vinyl the floors. Like I said before, I'm going to leave that old vinyl down because apparently um, there can be asbestos underneath it so I'll just leave it and vinyl through the whole way on top. And then we need to sort out what we're doing with the bench tops. All these surfaces in that old yellow colour look pretty average. So I don't know if we can paint over it or if I'll just get a, um, get a new bench top cut to suit. See how we go, not too sure yet. Need to paint that. And uh, Tiff's still working on all the upholstery and whatnot. I've also had to re-secure the floor down in spots. These um, pop rivets, the old pop rivets have just pulled out. So I've pre-drilled all the holes into the uh, chassis rail underneath. And I've driven some, um, some metal head screws in there. And they're sitting below the surface so it's not going to be an issue with the vinyl. So we changed our mind and decided that we'd paint the cabinets as well and the bench tops rather than replacing the bench tops. So I pulled all the cabinets off, removed all the hardware. Everything's been prepped with this ESP stuff. Apparently you don't have to sand um, the surfaces before and it's made, it, it, it's made for timber veneer and laminate, so see how that goes. Um, and then on top of that, uh, a water-based enamel, semi-gloss. Um, that's just a white one, that's going to be all the cabinets and whatnot. The bench tops, I bought the same product but in the neutral um, and I've had it tinted to Viking grey and that'll be the bench tops. Same deal with all the hardware, pulled it all off, cleaned it down with that ESP, gave it a, you, you apply that ESP with like a green scourer um, and then I'm going to do all the hardware the same colour as the bench tops. So it'll be um, that Viking grey on semi-gloss white, hopefully that comes up alright. Would have been easier to do all this when we prepped the walls, but um, we had a change of heart. We didn't think we were going to do it, but there's still just too much brown in here. Painting inside the van is pretty much done. 
come up pretty good. A few little things I'd do differently if I was doing it again. I removed all the um, cupboards to paint them, all the doors. I, I would have removed the hinges and not painted over them because I didn't realise they would crack so bad and chip as soon as you try open them. I should have known, but yeah. And probably next time I you, you can buy these in black. I've painted them same same colour as the bench tops, but next time, I mean, I'd probably buy those in in black because the paint sticks to them, but not great. But we'll see how they wear. Still might do that. So all the walls and whatnot are done in a low sheen wall paint, Torbman's Endure, and all the cabinets, the the, the uh, actual doors and the cabinets themselves are all done in a water based enamel Torbman's as well. That's a Viking grey, uh, which is also water based enamel. I've done the bench tops and and the door hardware in. Um, that was just a semi gloss white, and the door was a low sheen. Oh, sorry, the walls were low sheen. Tiff's finished with the curtains. And the stuff behind them, I don't know what you call that, lace. What are the curtains called, babe? Pencil fin plate or something? Pencil plate, yeah. And we've managed to source a um, managed to source a bed for this space as well. It's a double over single. It's going to run east west, um, but I'm going to extend the bottom, uh, the double, to, so I can fit a queen mattress on it, and hopefully it comes in underneath this sort of bulkhead space a little bit just to make use of the floor space we have but before that flooring that's next vinyl flooring and there it is there the stuff we're using I think it's Senso brand self adhesive and the color was Pekin uh, available in a Pekin white as well but we just got the Pekin okay. there's the bed frame tube steel wooden slats doesn't weigh too much um, the ad, I was annoyed, I bought it second hand because I couldn't find a brand new one that was that was single over queen. The ad said that it was single over queen. I should have brought my measuring tape because I brought it home and when I looked at it properly I realised that's only a double on the bottom. But because the slats are about the same height as the rail, I'll, I'll build another 100 mil out this side with some angle or something to support a queen size mattress. And um, where it joins to the frame here as well, I'll, build, I'll uh, put a spacer in 50 mil this side and 50 mil the other side so I can fit the queen in. So we've done the first couple of hours of flooring. This stuff's wicked, it's self adhesive. I'm just laying it straight on top of the old vinyl. Got a battery there to hold some weight down in one corner where it was lifting. But yeah, this stuff's great to cut it. All you have to do is score it with your, score it with your blade and just snap it. And um, just cut in around the corners and whatnot. Apply a bit of pressure to get it to stick nicely. Easy. Alrighty, so that's the flooring finished. Nearly done in here. Got to refit the table. Get the uh, seats done, the lounge, and the bed in, and that's pretty much it. Plenty of space at the moment. Once the bed goes in, it will um, close things up a little, which is a shame. But yeah, this flooring was great. I'm very happy with it so far. Nothing's lifted overnight. Super quick to install, and it looks pretty good. So I just started doing the suspension. <clears throat> Plan was to um, pull the old axle out, the springs out. Um, and invert them so before it was sitting like this underneath the caravan before I'm gonna rotate the axle put the spring back on top and by doing that I gain the thickness of the axle and the thickness of the spring pack um, in height so it'll, it'll, it'll give me a little bit more clearance so in doing so, I've realised that this axle is badly bent. It is bowing hard like a banana. So I'll replace that with a solid axle. Uh, and I may replace these spring packs too because they're looking a little worse for wear. I've just had a bit of a dummy spit because I've been waiting ages for these parts for the, um, 
for the hubs and I've just realised they've sent me five stud hubs they're not going to work on a six stud rim so they're going to have to go back tomorrow but anyway for now what I'm doing I've got I will have new hubs that fit properly I've got new uh, electric brakes um, all new hangers and new poly bushes for the springs some new decaples I needed some all new nylon nuts two sets of bearings um, one spare set I just like to carry a spare set with me uh, I was going to run a treg hitch but speaking to the dudes in the know they reckon what's this uh, uniglide trailer coupling this is meant to be the bee's knees I need a new handbrake because it will work slightly differently so I quite like the look of this um, it's got a, a Toyota uni joint in it um, and they've they printed somewhere on it, that might be it there, they printed the part number for the uni joint, so if you're ever stuck somewhere um, and you need another one if you flog it out I'll be able to get one um, it's fully greasable grease nipples there, grease nipple on the uni joint the good thing about it is that it'll articulate a hell of a lot further the, the, the Treg had no issues going to 90 degrees either side but it would only had a field of about 30 degrees of movement up and down whereas this will go 90 degrees in every direction um, so that looks quite good and I'm hoping that the bolt pattern is going to be the same we'll see how we go, should be I think they're fairly standard so there's the bigger tyres that are going to go on I'm going to have to return those hubs tomorrow but while I'm waiting I've got a little bit to do tonight anyway it's already late in the afternoon I got um, the trailer place to weld on the brake backing plates for me reason being that they've got to be done um, you know like really square and I didn't really want to do it myself just in case I stuffed it up so I got them to do it um, and they look pretty good I've just been quickly welding on these uh, leaf pack uh, locators I suppose they're called so I've measured off the other axle this axle is wider so I've measured from the from the middle of this one back and then found the middle point on this one and measured back to make sure it's um, in the right spot so my welds are horrible but uh, I'll be able to hang a car off them now that it's sprung over it's going to sit something like that so I'm going to gain the thickness of the leaf pack the thickness of the locator and the thickness of the axle uh, in height which will allow me to run a bigger wheel and then I'm also going to gain height half the diameter, overall diameter of the wheel I'll gain in height as well so at the moment I'm thinking I'm going to get somewhere between 6 and 8 inches um, which was important because this step to get into the van is just so bloody low I've got to wipe it out on the first rock which I can see someone's already done so that's the reason for it and this is the hitch we had on before, just a standard hitch so you can see I've got to change over the handbrake mount as well that's where I'm at See that bush is pretty flogged out that one once they start going it doesn't take too long because they start getting a little bit more movement in the joint and it's uh, they end up shagged in no time especially on corrugations or anything like that so it's a good idea why the spring packs out place all the bushes and uh, the reason I'm reusing these spring packs is because uh, they don't actually make this size, I'll have to get them custom made and the reason I know they're okay to use um, is because these little uh, clamps are still tight, everything's still tight, they're not splaying out or anything like that, the locator's still intact um, the, the eyes themselves where they mount to the, to the chassis rail haven't opened up and nothing's damaged, nothing's cracked and they rode fairly well so I mean that's always an indication of what's the condition the leaves are in and all this surface rust is nothing to worry about I mean, I'll probably give it a wire wheel and a, and a lick of whatever um, chassis paint I'm doing underneath the van anyway a rust kill or something like that all I'm doing there is I'm just taking off this uh, locator that holds the pack all together um, 
because I'm inverting the springs, they're going to be running slightly different on top of the axle rather than underneath. So that little uh, tail of the bolt sticking out effectively was going to be in the way. Uh, so I'm just taking the head off it rather than unbolting this, trying to get that old seize pin out and flipping it around. There's no real need to. I'll just take off a little bit that's protruding. So I'll do that to both leaves. The beauty of uh, underslinging the axle like this is that the thread from the U-bolts or the hangers end up facing upwards, not downwards. Beforehand they were facing down. And the risk is that when you're off-road, if you smash into a rock or something like that and you mushroom these heads or you deform that thread, it makes it bloody hard to get these bolts off should you ever have to change anything on the side of the road. You pretty much need an oxy kit or, or a grinder or to cut them off. So it's a little bit more protection for off-road having it this way anyway. And the added bonus of a hell of a lot more ground clearance. Fitting your brake backings back onto the axle, a couple of things to be mindful of um, is that you've got the right side. On the back of them they'll have engraved right or left hand side. So you see this one down there. L for left. So that's one thing. Reason being that when you've got them on, you want the. You also want this handbrake for the drum lever. Sorry, this brake lever for the drum brake. You want that facing up, so when you run your cables, they're not hanging down low where they're going to get smashed by rocks. You also just want to make sure that your brake cables aren't in the way when you're doing up these bolts. I find it easier to do up these bolts that are finger tight put the drum assembly back on, or the hub assembly back on, um, adjust this brake out until it binds, the drum brake, then do these up tight, and then back, back that uh, drum brake off eight to sort of 12 clicks, somewhere around 10 clicks, and then give it a spin and see how it goes. I find that's generally right. And that's certainly been the advice that I've been given from, uh, from other shops. So for the electrics, I've run some heavy duty six mil cable from my uh, cranking battery on the car back to a weatherproof Anderson plug. And because of the length of the cable is going to be, there'll be a bit of voltage drop. So rather than hooking it straight up to the battery in the van, it'll go through a DC-DC charger. I've gone with the Thunder, it's a 20 amp one. I still need to get some, uh, some covers for the back of these plugs. Um, I've got a 100 amp hour deep cycle AGM battery down there. This will get rid of any voltage drop over that long length of cable um, and helps that battery get up to 100% by giving it the right sort of voltage it needs to charge correctly and the correct algorithms and whatnot. Uh, it's also got solar input there, so I've got a 200 watt solar panel that will go on the top of the van to help out with free camping and whatnot. Not that we're going to run much anyway, we're only really running lighting inside and the uh, the water pump. Everything else, electrical, I'd be running off my car anyway. I've got a... Uh, this is all set up for cooking out of and whatnot, running whatever we want. I've got 240 amp hours of AGM batteries, 2 kilowatt inverter, and uh, we cook in here in the back of the car. There's the cooker. That's the kitchen. Fridges. Drawers with all the cutlery and cooking bits and pieces. So the van's really just for sleeping and, and uh, relaxing on the couch and getting out of the shitty weather. Somewhere safe and warm for baby as well. So yeah, we're not really, we're not finished yet. I don't think we'll ever really be finished. I'll probably um, paint the outside of the van. Um, but yeah, it's definitely ready to go for now. So that's how the bunk beds end up looking. Fridge works nicely. Check it on gas, 240, 12 volt. Everything works well. Uh, I think they're all wired up like this anyway, but that's the 12 volt switch. Um, and there for 240 volt, which we'll rarely have anyway. Tiff's curtains come out really good. The flooring, people were saying that this kind of flooring is not great for vans, but we are just done a 3000k trip, hundreds of kilometres of corrugations and haven't had an issue yet, but I guess we'll see how we go. The upholstery on the chair come up really good. That was really nice for... Um, 
bub to be changed on and Tiff to sit on while she was feeding through the night. The paint seems to be nice and seems to uh, held up pretty good. Oven works, stove top works. But yeah, come up really good. And uh, we might be van people now, we loved it. And the old van <clears throat> stood up to the track okay. Although the microwave came flying out. Although we're no, I don't think we'd ever use it anyway. We were smashing it. Lucky it didn't smash the, the glass. But otherwise, love the corrugations, held up well. This is all the baby shit that you have to bring when you take a four month old away with you. So that entire bunk bed is basically just all her crap. She's got more clothes just for her than Tiff and I have combined. But she needs it apparently, anyway. But yeah, no, the van held up well.